working i hope you guys are doing well so today we'll be learning cascading drop down okay so cascading drop down is uh, we have a let's say two or three drop down and based on selections of one drop down we will be displaying the data in second drop down if you have a third so based on selections of second drop down we will be displaying the third drop down okay so we will be configuring this using data pages okay so here just like i have already configured but we'll go and see how we can configure from the beginning so let's see just a, a quick demo so here if i'm selecting so see if if i've selected nothing in this one then nothing is coming in the second one if i'm selecting fruits then we'll see the those fruits if i'm selecting vegetables then we can see the vegetables if i'm selecting beverage then we are seeing the beverage okay and this is cascading drop down is one of the important uh, ui elements and um uh, generally if you go going for if you're going for interview then also people ask these questions okay so let's start this you can see this this is the table where we have uh, like uh, uh, just have like a seven or eight data okay so we have a product id category and product name so what we'll, we're going to do is on selections of category we will be displaying the product name in the second drop down okay so let's say if i'm selecting beverage then we'll be displaying coffee soda tea and if i'm selecting fruits then we'll be selecting here i can update we'll be displaying the other one okay and the same for the vegetables okay so let's see and how we can do that so for first first things what we need okay? so if you see we have a two drop down okay so the source of those two drop down okay from where the source will come okay so this is the table we have so in that case first we'll be creating a two data pages okay because uh, the, using data pages we'll be able to fetch the data from the database so basically from this table because this table like eventually this data is stored in table only so let's see how we can do that okay so we can create a data page so i'll go here create data page so we can give first name is get category list so this will be our first data page okay and the class is the same product class okay so data product class here we can select the class and create that so for now i'll leave the default everything okay i'll not be uh, going into detail okay about what we should have thread or node and and, and requester so those things it, it it's varies based on the like our requirement okay so here from where we are bringing so then this will be definitely the list so that we are going to change and from where we'll bring the data okay so we are bringing the data from the database table so here we are using report definitions but let's say if if you are getting the country list from external system then maybe you can use connector okay so if you are getting a country list from that like outside the system and then based on that you are uh, populating the states okay maybe the same service can give you both the details so it all depends like what we are using where is the source of your data for, for us here we have only in pega so we'll just give the same name okay the underscore category list we'll configure quickly create a report definition so here we'll give the same name get category list so if you see this one it, it won't have any parameter so basically there is no conditions we want to fetch all the category okay the parameter will go in the second one okay if you are like if someone is asking you okay you have a table and now you have to run a query okay so how you'll get the data all data so simply you can run the select star query okay so in that way you'll get the data but if someone is asking okay get uh, give me the data for okay uh, uh, give me the product name of or the data which belongs to a particular category then particular category that means some condition is coming okay so we'll add the condition in the second one first one in first one with conditions is not required so here in column source what we want to fetch in the category one we just want to fetch category okay so we can just fetch the category nothing else we need it in the second one we'll be needing a uh, few more things okay so we'll see that so now our data page is created okay here parameter page we can check it check this one but it's not required because anyway we are not using any parameter for this one so now we have created so let's see uh, let's run it quickly and see what data we are getting okay so here we got the seven result count if i see the result okay we got all the category see here beverage 
beverage okay so one thing is happening is that we are getting the same thing okay three times okay because we have added multiple times okay so what we can do is we can go to report definitions and we can say remove duplicate rows okay so in that way we'll get the unique one okay so let me run the report definitions directly so whatever the report definitions will give uh, okay it will uh, data page will also give the same informations okay so it's taking me some time okay so we got three so the unique results we got fruit vegetables and beverage fine so our one is done now the second data page will be needing what uh, okay so we can save as with this one also we can create a new one okay so we'll go data model okay here and data page so this time get product by category okay so we can uh, give the name we can give the name okay so naming convention is also very important because if someone as uh, some other person is reviewing your code he'll understand that what you're doing with this one so what name will give? get product by category by category means okay like category will be the condition okay so here okay now we can give that same product class so this time okay one parameter will come so what parameter will come is category so here we have used category as a category only okay if you, maybe in your database there there can be one more column category id okay because we should generally do not use a string as a conditions because if let's say if someone is writing this beverage in a in a different case okay then you have to equ use equal ignore case but for now just for learning purpose this is fine but you can have your id so basically we always try to put a condition on id okay but for now it's fine okay because we're just doing for learning purpose so in parameter in data page I'm, I'm saying that yes we'll be passing category and then uh, type of a string and then required yes required and then here also we can give category okay now this will be also list okay so basically with this one we'll be fetching um, uh, fetching by category will be fetching the list of product okay so here also again we'll, we'll be creating a report definition So for this cascading drop down, if you have configured the data page, that's it. Like most of the work is done. So let's see here. Category. So in this one, what we are looking, we are just looking product. Okay. Nothing else. And then we can also return product ID because let's say if you want to put that product ID for the conditions. Okay. So this is fine. Like because what happens sometimes we'll display in the drop down why we need the product IDs because sometimes we display the drop down in the drop down. Let's say you want to display T as a one of the product, but the the uh, ID can be different for the T. So here if you see the product ID for the T is three. Okay, so maybe you want to use this this product ID in your code in your logic. Okay, so but the display will be this one and then mm, the value will be this one. For that one we use that. Okay, so let's see if we can use this one. So yes, I have product name and product ID and then condition so here we have to add a conditions because basically report report definition is done it just prepare a query and give us the data okay and then the condition will be param dot category okay so we have to add in report definitions whatever the uh, parameter we added in this data page we have to give the same okay so we can give category here and here also we have to give and we have to define this is mandatory we have to define the type otherwise it will throw exception so we define category now we can come here and write that param dot category so see it's coming in drop down done okay so now if i run this one okay so here we are getting a validations uh, sorry exceptions uh, or that warning because here it's saying use null if empty okay so if not, like if if we check this one then the warning will go away okay so if I do not add, then even if I'll not passing that, let's see what is the difference, okay? So let me run without that checking the checkbox. So see, we are getting all. So basically, Pega will ignore that condition, okay? But now if I'll add this one, okay? Then Pega will add a condition equals to null, category equals to null. So there is no category equals to null in the, our database table, so it will return only, uh, I mean, it, will, it won't result uh, return any result. But if I now give a value of category, then we can, get some results
and and why we and why we do this okay so because of performance so let's say if we just leave it this blank okay if you do not check then what will happen okay somehow if you're if you're not like if your condition is blank then what will happen pega will try to bring that entire data from database table okay so in that way you can uh, perform performance issue can happen so that's where like as a best practices we should check this checkbox so now we are ready with the report def uh, report definition so we can just come here again to this data page and we can save this one more thing which we have to do is that yes the, uh, the parameter will come okay let's say here if i'll run now then it will ask to enter the parameter so we can enter the parameter fruits but how we have to pass it to report definitions because that parameter should pass it to report definition so one way is here we can go to parameter and enter here whatever it is coming from that uh, data page okay another way is you can simply pass the entire current param uh, entire parameter page okay so we usually try to do this one only because if you do one by one so sometimes people miss that okay so we'll just check this checkbox and we'll pass it entire okay, to data page and now we are configuring those two data page in the section so we have this create section so what first we'll be doing we'll be selecting two drop downs okay because for, first for the category and the second one if second one is for that product okay so we'll go to pickers okay and pick, picker will find okay so the, this is the first drop down and then we'll select another second drop down okay so now we have to use uh, whatever the data page we have created so here in place of category i have already created a property called category so we can select this property category so what will happen whatever the value will select okay from the drop down the value will go and save to this category okay so now we have to come to the source okay, sorry list source like from where the the detail will come okay that category list will come so that is that will come from the d underscore get category list okay so we can select this one and then here we have a property for value so we'll select category so let's say if you have a category id you can use that category id as well here for both the things okay i have only one because usually as i explained okay that you can have a category id okay because that name vivara is beverage or fruits you should we should generally not try to use that in condition okay but for now this is fine okay so since just submit it and then so let's create like without configuring the second one let's create a case and see how it is looking okay if the data is coming or not so we can see that yes in fruits we have this okay like sorry in in based uh, like in first drop downs we have the data we got the data if you want to if you want to add a placeholder you can do that one as well like include placeholder and you can say select something like that because usually we we should not display the value first value by default sometimes yes if you have a requirement we can do that that this this value if you want to display but you can select placeholder so if i do that one then what will happen the value it, it, it while reload while loading the screen okay the first value will be select i mean it won't be any value selected so you see here we have a select and from that one we can select this one. now we'll, we'll try to configure the second drop down as well okay so in second drop down i have given created again another property called product id so here if you see okay we will be displaying the product name but in the clipboard we will be saving the product id okay so here we'll configure the data page again and this time our data page name is d underscore get product by category okay so here will copy that one and come to that sections create sections and i'll give this data page the moment i'll give this data page it will ask the, for the parameters yes so we have to pass our category as a parameter okay now property for value is product id and for display product name so this is what i was talking okay that we can use two different value okay because like let's say you have a country and then you have a country code you have a state and a state code so in that way okay so this is fine one more things which we have to do is that on selections of this one we need to post the value if we do not post the value to this property like if we just select then value will not post okay so let me show you so let's see if I, here i have selected the value but if i'll go to clipboard will not see the value so if i go to py walk page okay so this is the this is the mistake many junior does okay and they'll say it's not working so see here the value of categories is still blank okay so we need to post that okay then only the second like if we pass then only the second drop down will take the value and pass it to uh, pass it for, to the database for conditions okay so what we have to do on change we have to post it so i'll add event okay on change and then we have to select post value let's see post value is working sometime post value doesn't work okay in that case we have to use refresh sections okay so let's see okay i i added that 
post value i'll refresh this so now we'll select the value fruits okay see it worked so the moment i selected fruits we got a mango okay and grapes the moment i'll select vegetables we got two different onion and potato okay and then and then a beverage okay so see it's, it's happening okay so entered value for six product id is not valid so some something we are getting okay let's see what we are getting that error product name product i think this is configuration is correct only okay and one more things we can do here is include placeholder for this one as well So just post value is working okay let's create another case okay and see that so now i'll select fruits okay so see i'm getting mango and then getting grapes that error is also gone if i select vegetables okay then again it's coming but onion and potato that is fine this product uh, entered value for five product id is not valid I don't know let me see why that product ID is saying not valid let me see the type of okay so it's because what happens when we did like uh, because here we it says uh, like um, we have some uh, drop down like here some configuration so we can just we can remove so basically uh, uh, like uh, when I created from the app studio, I was doing something, then it added it from here. Okay, so we can just go to property and select none because we don't want to do anything from here. So, okay, so just the mistake in the property. So now if I cancel, then I should, we should not get that issue. So we can just save and close and create a new case. So just ignore that error. Okay, so you should have simply fruits, mango, and then beverage okay we have so see the error is gone so basically what we configured let's recap okay so this is how the the drop down box okay uh, cascading drop down so we have category also so here also i'll just remove it okay i'll just say it none that is not required okay so let's let's re refresh what we learn okay so we have a product table okay and based on the and, and what we wanted we just wanted to display the product name based on the category or product uh, details okay so we created two draw two database one is the d underscore category by list and category list simply and then the second one get product by category and then we came we created a sections in that sections we configure two drop down first is that for the category and then we created one property a category of type text and then uh, we configured the source okay with the first with the first uh, data page okay and then again we came to the second and in second we passed that the value with whatever it got posted in category okay and in the second data page so that's it and and it's working so i hope this quick video will help you in configuring your cascading drop down so this is one of the like uh, heavy uh, heavily used use case and especially if you are like uh, if you're starting pega or if you have a one or two x, x experience you should definitely learn this so thank you thank you very much have a good day bye